Hello there, I'm Jesse King with West Virginia Division of Forestry and today we're going to learn about watersheds, soil structure, erosion, sedimentation, and root systems. Uh, all things that help keep uh, healthy, clean water here in our state of West Virginia where we thrive and we care about the beauty of West Virginia. So if you want to learn some science, uh, a little bit of things to do in your environment and have fun at home, this is a lesson for you. Okay, for our next activity, we're going to do an activity to represent watersheds and how your water transfers uh, across the landscape. So for this activity, you'll need two metal trays. Uh, you'll need some, a larger white paper. You'll need some markers to draw some identifying uh, markers on the landscape. Some scissors, possibly to cut your paper. So a spray bottle with water, which would represent some of the rain and weather elements and some water and food coloring to make it a little bit more fun. So the paper is going to represent what our landscape would be. So currently if we would look at a flat piece of paper we'd have a flat landscape, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to pick up your paper and then you're going to crumble it. Have fun at it, crumble it pretty tight, make it however you want, and then slowly unfold it making it slightly flat again. So now you have a different form of a landscape. Placing that landscape however it needs to be into your pan. Now that kind of brings on to the appearance of having large mountains or hills with crests and different places, dips and valleys and ridges. So with your marker, now what you're going to do is you're going to take a blue marker and mark the areas where you believe on your landscape that water would maybe drain down into a valley. These can be various different places on different sides of the hill. Take your time, play and decide where you believe that that water would drain off. Okay, so as we're doing our different drains, also any areas that would re-flatten off could possibly be a pond area or a place where water could collect. So if we have an area that we think would collect, then we're gonna kinda make a circle and maybe fill it in as if that would be a pond. Or a large water basin area, let's say like a dam or something like that. So I'm marking all the places I believe my water will drain and then pull. Okay, so once I'm done with that part of my landscape, I'm going to use a different colored marker and I'm going to do the ridges. These would be the highest points in which water would start and then drain off into those areas. For this example, I'm going to use orange for my ridge tops. So for my specific landscape that was randomly done, I kind of come off at a main point up above and then I separate into another section off to the side. While doing this, if I see any new places that I believe will pull or anything like that, I can always grab my marker, draw a new water body in those locations. Okay, so now that we got those represented, now we've got a spray bottle with a little bit of uh, green food coloring, some kind of dye in it. So using this, we're going to spray it one direction because our storms a lot of times come from one direction, right? So if we would spray our hillside, let's say in this direction and a little bit above, this represents our rain. Notice as it builds up, we start building up different drains different things like that. We can see that it's leaking down in some of the areas that we marked. But we can also see some areas that stay dry, right? Because our water is all coming from one side and then we have dry side of the hill and a wet side of the hill. And these are how they're draining. So now we can see different areas that pulled, maybe that we didn't think would pull before. We can see areas that did pull that we thought that they would. Now knowing where our watersheds uh, flood or build up over time, this could also tell us maybe where we want to put structures. So if we want to build structures over time, we wouldn't want to build them down in an area that would flood. So what we want to mostly do is maybe build them on a side, um, a dry ridge, something like that. So we could build up in here, 
uh, have a community or even down in this area where it stays very dry but it's flat making a better area for a community that does not flood. Here even we have a location that would be great for a home or a community. So practice this, do a whole bunch of different landscapes, uh, see what all you come up with and try to do heavy rain, light rain, uh, try to see how many water bodies you can form, things like that and it forms different watersheds like you have in your community. What you'll need for this activity uh, is two empty trays. Uh, one that you will fill with just plain soil with no vegetation. One you will fill with uh, soil with vegetation on the upper coverage. So then you'll need plenty of water. You'll need two jars with some kind of label at the bottom. This could be a number, it could be your initials. For this example, we have the West Virginia Division of Forestry symbol at the bottom. Okay, dur during normal activities that we uh, conduct in our environment through construction, agriculture, timber harvest, oil and gas, whatever it may be, uh, we cause some kind of disturbance to the soil. When doing so, we usually take off this topsoil that's got luscious vegetation on it and what we have left is this bare exposed soil. Not always will bare soil come back on its own to be luscious and coverage like what we have here. A lot of times we have to add seed and mulch, various different things, and that's why there's regulations across the state. Uh, our state has highly erodible soils, uh, making it very difficult to keep our um, micro and macro invertebrates in our streams, as well as our uh, fish like trout, uh, different kinds of things like that, uh, in a level that they need to be. Sediment can cause various different things like change in alkalinity over time, change in our pH, various things that could kill some of the um, species that thrive in a stream. So what this experiment's going to show you is uh, as a normal rainfall would occur, we get a certain amount of sedimentation or also what we call uh, visibility and turbidity uh, would occur in the stream. So uh, this will represent our landscape. The jars will represent the water that would be runoff from erosion. And then at the bottom, we're going to be able to read our logo at the bottom to see how clear that it actually comes out. Let's start with our highly erodible soil with no vegetative cover. So here we have a normal rain event that would take place over top of the surface. Notice that it leaches through very quickly and then would start pulling down into our jar. So as it drips, we can see how muddy that it is. That mud is actually particles. Soil comes in different uh, size particles. And as those particles mix in with the water, then they uh, fill up the jar and we can see how thick that is. For fish, this is hard to breathe. It'd be the same as if we were in like a sandstorm or anything like that. And it affects the minerals uh, and different chemistry in the water, just as we mentioned before. So now if we're gonna try our uh, landscape with a vegetative cover, we can see as the rain event would come through and then pour down into our jar we should see that the vegetation, one, that takes up a large amount of the water, but two, filters it to a certain point to be cleaner than what the other one is. If we see this jar, this jar has more particles in it. It's thicker, muddier looking, right? This one here is from our vegetative cover. So this filtered through, it's a little bit waterier, also meaning it has less number of soil particles in it. Now because in our experiment we uh, took the soil out today, both of our soils are technically disturbed. That's why we still have a little bit of mud coming through with our filtered uh, vegetative cover. But if we would grow vegetative cover instead of getting it out from our landscape like we did today, it would probably come out even cleaner. But this is a fun little experiment that you can do at home. You can also test turbidity in your own streams by getting a large tube like this one, uh, dipping it into the stream, looking to see if you can see uh, something at the bottom, a label, your initials, something like that, measuring the distance, and that is how we measure turbidity. Professionals, a lot of the times, used for ponds and lakes, use a tool like this, where they would drop it down into a lake, 
Once they can no longer see the black and white disc referred to as a Secchi disc, then that would give us a measure of turbidity. Okay, so what we have here is over a hundred Norway spruce that actually came from our state nursery here in West Virginia in Mason County. So we talked about soil erosion and watersheds and different things like that. Uh, we use a lot of times for reclamation activities after harvest or in disturbed soils, we can replant uh, sapling trees to hold that structure of the soil. They do that through all the root systems. So a lot of times we think about what's above ground, right? But when we look at a large mass of saplings, we can see all these root systems and all these fine roots that are pulling in nutrients that are also holding in the structure of the soil. So it's a really good idea to plant different trees, uh, different species, all depending on what your uh, resource concerns are. So if you're planting in, say, a wetland, we might, may want to use something like a bald cypress. If you're planting in maybe uh, a different area, you'd want to use something with a larger root system or something like this with a, a more fine, longer, deeper tap root system. These trees here are going to be no donated to Glenville State College as part of their forestry program to be planted around areas that they have erosion on their property. As part of forest management and habitat structures, uh, it's a great idea during Arbor Day or any day like that or any day of the year that you want to plant a tree and help your environment, you ought to do so. Uh, there's foresters in every county that can help you do this. Uh, meet up with one of us and we'll help you plant a tree.